Homebrew Brewery. This brew day is going to be very straightforward. Today I'm brewing the Autumn Amber Ale, batch size 52 liters. This is 10 kilograms of pale malt, 1 kilogram of carapils, 50 grams of rose malt and 175 grams of special B. I did the grain crushing process outside because it saves me a lot of dust inside the brewery. This is the end result to me. This looks like a very nice crush. Works perfect for me on the Braumeister. So I prepared the grains. Now it's time to fill the Braumeister with 55 liters of water. I'm using hot tap water. That saves me a lot of time to heat up. I switched on the Braumeister and I'm going to show you the settings of this recipe. Uh, I'm using an ale recipe that I created myself. I'm going to dough in at 63 degrees Celsius and I'm going to mash for 70 minutes at 63 degrees. Next step is 73 degrees for 5 minutes. Next step 78 degrees for 5 minutes. I will boil at the maximum temperature so the heating element won't switch off. Total boil time will be 60 minutes. I have hop addition at 60 minutes. The 15 minutes is a reminder of the wort chiller. 10 minutes left on the boil is a reminder for the Rilflock tablet and the yeast nutrient. And 5 minutes left on the boil, that's a hop addition. And I will show you later what kinds of hops I'm using for this recipe. 1 minute left on the boil, that's a reminder of the uh, aroma hop that I'm going to add. There is 35 liters already in the Braumeister and as you can see the temperature of my tap water is 64 degrees. Ventilate the pump. We'll show you the inside. Again ventilating the pump to get all the air out. Switch it off and on again. Ventilating the pump makes the temperature drop a bit. I guess 63 degrees, that's perfect. And almost 55 liters inside the Braumeister. Switched off the tap water and I'll show you the next step. Time to start the program. It's the ill program. Let's select it. It asks me is the water filled in? Yes. Again pump ventilation. Temperature drops a bit so the heating element switched on. And it's time to dough in when the temperature reaches 63 degrees Celsius. It's reached the temperature, now I'm going to fill in the mold. I forgot to mention something. Before I'm going to add the grains to the Braumeister, I'm going to put 20 milliliters of lactic acid in it. So it will correct the pH. It works perfectly for me, 20 milliliters. The pH will be about 5.4 or so. Let's give it a stir. First thing is 
the mold pipe and set it in place like this. And the big filter screen. There it goes. I'm using the large holes. This is a back brewing filter plate. So it's not an original Bromeiser, and this is the one with the bigger holes in it. It's on the bottom. This board is going to be slightly um, more cloudier and maybe more grain particles in it, but the efficiency will be much better. Well, time to add the mold to it. I'm just going to dump the half of the grain bill in it and give it a good stir. I never had any issues with uh, dry pockets. This way you can add the grains at different methods. This is my method. I'm not saying this is the best one, but I like to uh, keep the brew day short. And as you can see, it's no problem. You can add little bits like this and give it a stir again. It's what you prefer. But I like to do it this way. Just make sure you mix it very well. And all the grains are wet, no dry pockets in it. This part of the brew day is my favorite part because the smell coming off the grains is fantastic. When it comes in contact with the hot water, it's uh, every brewer knows what I mean, I guess. This is lovely. Of course, I will check the pH. after the molds are added but every time when I use 55 liters of my own tap water it's uh, around 5.4 or 5.5 and it's good enough for me I'm not making signs of it again there are different ways to brew I like to brew it like this. Well, that's good enough for me. Again, a back brewing filter plate. Again with the large holes. I own both. Big filter plate of Spidal. Then a steel bar on top and a wing nut. Let's tighten it. That's enough. Let's start the program. Um, I'm just going to start it just with two taps on the controller. And here you have a nice view of the pump pumping the water from outside through the mold pipe and it will overflow. It will flow over like this. Green particles, but uh, nothing to be worried about. It looks like the Bromeister is slightly off level, but I will check it later. Let's put the lid on during the mesh process. Pick the camera up and show you the screen of the controller. So the temperature drops again 1 degree Celsius. 
That's because I added the grains to it and the grains are about 21 degrees Celsius. So I dropped one degree. The controller will wait till the temperature reaches 63 degrees Celsius again. It's heating up, you can see it on the symbol over there. And when it reaches the 63 degrees Celsius, the timer will start 70 minutes mesh at 63 degrees Celsius. Heating element switched off, timer started. So, see you again in 70 minutes. Meanwhile, I'm going to do a pH test. You all know how it looks like. In the background you can hear the Braumeister is still mashing. I will explain more about this recipe. It's based on the autumn amber ale that I brewed so many times, but I tweaked this one a little bit. For example, I use more special bee to give it a more of a roasting uh, taste to it. A different type of bitter hop. Uh, I will explain to you what kind of yeast I'm using and uh, what I'm putting in during the boil. Total boil time will be 60 minutes, so 60 minutes left on the boil, this will be at the start of the boil, about 68.5 grams of magnum hops, the bag is empty, about 4 grams of yeast nutrient, I know I need some more but this works perfectly for me, 4 grams of yeast nutrient and one will flock tablet for clearing. About 5 minutes left on the boil. 40 grams of fuggle hops and when starting cooling and switching off the heating element when the Braumeister says cheers again 30 grams of fuggle hops I'm going to dry hop this beer also in the conical fermenter I will put about 30 grams of fuggle hop again in at day 5 of uh, fermentation, day 5 or 6, depending on uh, the activity. For the yeast, I'm using Seville USO5. I have two sachets, but also I have here a yeast slurry, about 150 milliliters. But this yeast slurry, I will give a close up, is about six weeks old and one week ago I made probably a mistake to drain off the beer on top of it so there is some oxygen in it so I'm not sure if I'm going to use the yeast slurry or the uh, two sedges when the time is ready to add the yeast I'm going to make the decision. I'm going to take a sniff on this one and check the aroma on it. When it's still fresh, I'm going to put it in. When it's, I think it's uh, spoiled, I'm going to use the sachets. So I'm prepared for both. But I really like to brew with flurries. The fermentation goes, starts faster and I have a better uh, fermentation in my cases, in my opinion. Well, that's more uh, about the recipe. I will see you soon when uh, heating up the sparge water. The first main step is almost finished. Time to heat up the sparge water. I'm using 12.8 liters of sparge water. Protein. Heat it up in my HLT to about 78 degrees Celsius. Inside the HLT you can hear the water is heating up. There is about 13 liters of water in it and I only need 12.8. In the background you can hear the HLT heating up the sparge water and you can see the Braumeister is also Heating the wort. The element switched back on. We're going to 73 degrees Celsius for about 5 minutes mesh. And then the next step again will be 78 degrees Celsius 
for five minutes and then we're going to sparge with the mold pipe out and going to sparge this batch. Before I'm going to sparge, I'm also going to correct the sparge water with a little bit of lactic acid. This is about six milliliters. I need a stir. I don't know if you can see it. It's uh, 87.2 degrees Celsius. I want to sparge at 78 degrees, but the time the water reaches the grain bed, it will uh, cool down. Almost at the end of the mesh process. Take the water out again. Pretty, pretty clear. Eventually, and a beautiful color. Well, about one and a half minutes left and I start sparging. Temperature overshoot a little bit. That's nothing to worry about. This is the end of the mesh. Check it out. Beautiful. Don't try this at home. The net is extremely hot. And also the stainless steel bar. Oops. I'm going to lift the mold pipe out using a hoist. Center the Braumeister underneath the hoist. And this is about it. Using a hoist is so much convenient and much safer. This mold pipe weighs about 22, 23 kilograms and I'm strong but I can't lift 23 kilograms with the arms like this. This is so convenient a hoist. Let's sparge. I always sparge one liter directly on top of it with all the filters in it. First filter. Back brewing filter plate with the large holes in it. I grab my spoon and I'm going to close the hole that's inside it because of the center post. Otherwise the sparge water will drain directly through that hole and not through the grains. So that one is closed. Time for some more sparging. Nice and easy. Slowly. Take the time. And what I usually like to do is command the Braumeister to continue and heat up to a boil. So it saves me again time. So I will do that. Start boiling, yes. Well, this is a pretty boring process, so I'll uh, cut the camera and cut this video, turn the camera out.
and I will see you outside because I'm going to boil outside. This was the remaining wort out of the mold pipe. Now I can take a gravity sample. Hopefully you can hear me, it's pretty windy today. As you can see there's a nice boil going on. The Braumeister uh, timer started already and it gave the signal to add the 60 minute left on the boil hob. So this is the the Magnum hops, 68 and a half grams. During the brew, I going to clean the. During the brew, I'm going to clean these parts: the filter plates, mold pipe, and the stainless steel bar. I've put them in my dishwasher. And uh, let's give it a start. Bye bye. 15 minutes left on the boil. Time to put the water chiller in. Connecting the hoses. Cold water in. Hot water out. 10 minutes left on the boil. Time to put the real fog tablet in. And here I have the 4 grams of yeast nutrient dissolved in hot water. You hear the signal, this is 5 minutes left on a boil. This is 40 grams of Galena. The Braumeister is giving an addition signal again. But it's the 1 minute reminder of the hop, hops that I'm going to Add right before I'm going to uh, switch the element off and uh, start cooling. So I have it already here. So it's a zero minute left on the boil addition. Just wait a couple of seconds more. Ten, nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bromeister switched off the element. Now I'm going to start cooling. <coughs> Pick the camera up. Show you the display of the Bromeister. Behind you, I'm sanitizing the lid of the Braumeister with some uh, sanding clean solution. Putting the lid on the Braumeister. And as you can see, the temperature drops. I'm going to give the Braumeister the command to switch on the pump when possible. The pump will start. when the temperature reached 84 degrees Celsius and as you can see the pump switched on, you can hear it and it uh, cools much faster with the pump on It looks like that the dishwasher did a pretty good job Everything nice and shiny again 23 minutes in the cooling process and the temperature is still 25 and a half degrees Celsius. I am going to transfer everything when it's uh, 23 degrees Celsius into the conical and let the linder do the rest of the work.
sanitized my conical fermenter, assembled it, it's complete and ready to transfer the wort in. The wort is 22 and a half degrees Celsius. It's one hour later after starting cooling. The wort has settled down, it's nice and clear. It's at the 55 liter marking, a little bit above. So when I leave about 3 liters inside the Braumeister, there will be 52 liters the bed size inside the corner. Let's transfer the wort in the corner. This valve is sanitized, running a couple of milliliters off because there's always some troop inside the valve. Let's drive the conical underneath the spigot. There we go. I will give you a close up. Well, here we go. Took a gravity sample. Check this out, check out the color. Hopefully the gravity is about 1.049 or higher. As you can see, the yeast became active again. I'm going to sanitize the bottle and open it and give the smell. The aroma is still fresh. I will use it and dump it right away in the conical. If it's not, I'm going to use the sedges. Some pressure on it. Yeah, it's good. For sure. Come with me. I'm going to add the yeast. May you become happy yeasties. Nice clear word. All the troop is at the bottom. Tilting the Braumeister a bit to get all the boards out of it. It's still pretty clear as you can see. And don't worry about some particles of the tube getting in. This is all good board. And now it starts to become cloudy. Well, this is what's left inside the Braumeister. I can measure it. It's, I guess, about four liters. So I guess I'm one liter short in the fermenter. But uh, we will see it when I'm going to keg it and bottle it. You can see it on the Krausen ring later. You can see the set temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. That's the temperature I'm going to ferment this batch. It's currently 21.4, so it cooled down rapidly. The pump is working, as you can see. There is water at about 7 degrees inside it. And as you can see, the temperature drops.
The only thing that remains is attaching an airlock. I'm going to fill it for some uh, water and sanitary solution. Then we are ready to go. I grabbed myself a really nice homebrew because I cleaned all the brewing equipment. Brownmeister is clean, malt pipe is clean, the wood chiller is clean. I'm done for today. I'm going to end this video and when the video is available about kegging this batch of uh, beer in a tasting video, I will put uh, an annotation on this video. I'm very happy with the result. I believe I have 51 liters inside the conical fermenter. The, pharma, the original gravity is about 1.049 or 50. I don't know exactly. Just tell me. Um, I guess. I have to be happy with uh, that number. Cheers! Hopefully you liked this video and remember nothing is better than a good homebrew like this one. Cheers guys! Beautiful citra hop.